All right, okay. And what are you going to talk about? Uh, today I will be talking uh, about uh, difficulties that we can face uh, during uh, development of Python code. Uh, I will share my screen. All right, so give a big hand to Michal. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, before I start, maybe a few words about me. Uh, I have uh, eight years uh, experience in Python, five years commercial experience in developing Python code. And uh, today I will uh, share my knowledge uh, and best practices and best tools that uh, I'm using during uh, project development. Uh, my presentation will be divided uh, in three main sections. Uh, each of them will be covered with a small story. And um, first of all, we'll start with the packages uh, um, that are available in Python world. Uh, we'll have a little bit about history of Python and confusions uh, related to that. Then we will switch uh, to the virtual and apps um we will tell what are what are for and uh some great tools that uh are allowing uh developing uh, our python code in virtual and ends and then uh, we finally focus on uh, package managers and uh we will try to clarify our all uh what are which are the best and what are the advantages and disadvantages of certain package managers uh, but before that uh we have to say that uh the python world packages virtual announce and package managers is looking like uh, this uh, uh because of the uh, history we have some uh, old documentation that is pointing for uh, packages that are not used. Uh, the same thing is uh, for um, package managers, uh, which uh, uh, which we uh, which it's not obvious which of them we should use. And uh, today I will try to clarify. Uh, what is the right path. And I hope that this picture will be much simpler. Um, so in the beginning, we'll start with the story related to AWS. Recently, I have a uh, few projects um, related to the, uh, uh, that, are, that were stored on AWS. And mainly I was working with Lambda, AWS Lambda functions. Uh, and uh, before we start our work, we uh, was choosing uh, be, uh, out of many tools how to deploy the Lambda. We could use uh, Terraform, uh, Serverless Framework, Bottle 3, CloudFormation, and many, many, many other tools. Finally, we decided for Terraform. And uh, to use Lambda, uh, the deployment of Lambda is looking like uh, this. We have to prepare the zip file uh, with our Python code. And uh, we also have to add the libraries that we are uh, required for example, to communication with database, with database like SQL Alchemy, because uh, Lam Lam AWS uh, Lambda itself contains only base la uh, libraries uh, uh, of Python. And during development, we noticed that uh, we have a problem that Terraform is constantly building our, um, our code on Lambdas. And the reason of that is, uh, was uh, uh, using different wheels because uh, we, mm, in the beginning, we was doing this by hand and each developer was uh, using different platform. And uh, what is wheel? I will tell in within few slides. Uh, and also, I will tell how we fixed that issue. 
but let's uh, start uh, from the beginning. Uh, we have uh, we have Python uh, files, and we can share them between community. Uh, for example, in Bottle Web Framework, uh, it is possible to create small web page uh, to the uh, for deployment, and we can just share this file. But it's not convenient to use that. We have uh, we have to uh, uh, use something more convenient and reliable. And first thing uh, that came across is a source uh, source code. Uh, and uh, for that. Uh, it is just simply the, the archive that is containing the Python uh, code. It may can it may contain other uh, source files like uh, C C source files for C Python. Uh, uh, we can define there the scripts uh, that will be available for our terminal. Uh, we can define, of course, README, the setup I or uh, setup CFG. Uh, I will tell a, li a little bit about setup by uh, later. Uh, and also, we have uh, the we have we can define some external packages, uh, package data like, um, for example, the trained model uh, of uh, neural uh, artificial ne neural network. Uh, and of course, metadata to know what exactly we are, uh, uh, the, what we have installed in our system. And uh, here we coming to the conclusion that each time we will want to use that, especially if we have the C source files, uh, we have to compile that. And this take time, and we would would like to have uh, the instant. Uh, package that will be ready to use, and such uh, such, and this can be offered by binary uh, packages. The first approach uh, was uh, X uh, in Python. The, they was introduced uh, with the setup tools in 2004. Um, there was no need for building or compilation. Uh, it was a distribution format and a runtime installation format. Uh, and the first approach of uh, listing what we have is installed in our system was a info di directory where we have where we had all necessary informations uh, what we have installed in our system. Uh, the funny thing about X, it was uh, possible to um, to install many versions of certain library, uh, and uh, of course uh, it was be possible to import direct directly the the egg. Uh, so what was the problem with them? Uh, there actually wasn't uh, official. Uh, PEP for that, and each package uh, manager, uh, package maintainer uh, has its own uh, directories uh, inside X, and we uh, in Python community uh, we had uh, we had to um, make something with that and make some standardization, uh, and for that. Uh, wheels uh, came across and uh, this also is a binary format. Uh, it was introduced in 2012 together with PEP 427. Uh, with wheels uh, we have uh, also standard for distribution uh, of the wheels and uh, standardization of the metadata. So instead of a gimmick fall, we now have the uh, now we have a different directory that is that is contain different metadata, uh, and this is the current standard for building the binary. Uh, wheels are not containing the 
uh, Python bytecodes, uh, but may contain uh, other pre-compiled uh, code, for example, for C, Python, and C libraries. Uh, as I mentioned, in, uh, instead of egg info, it is used the this info directory. And uh, the very uh, big advantage of wheels is that uh, they are versioned. They have the name convention. Uh, in the name, we can find the Python version that is supported, the implement, the certain implementation, because the Python can have different implementations. Uh, also, uh, there is information about application binary interface, which is different in Macintosh and Linux and uh, Windows, and uh, for which system architecture is built certain wheel. Um, for example, uh, Intel and AMD uh, uh, or other architectures. And of course, whether it's for uh, 32 or 64 bits. Uh, um, for now, some wheels are importable directly, for example, for our rep, uh, but uh, it's not supported by PEP 427 itself. And here we can see the example uh, wheels. The first is a universal wheel of the pip um, library, which is for Python 2 and 3. Uh, and this is example or one of the NumPy um, uh, wheel, uh, which is for CPython uh, 3.6 or Macintosh uh, 10.9 uh, for both uh, Intel architectures, 32 and 64 bits. Um, currently, uh, there are no um, there are no builder on the PyPy. The maintainers uh, just have to create all, all necessary wheels. We can create our wheel by the by this command. Uh, but uh, there is a great talk about uh, wheels uh, by Elena Hashman. If you want to know about uh, application binary interface in Linux, uh, the ELF format, uh, and how they are uh, maintained and built, uh, you can just uh, uh, watch it uh, by uh, clicking on the links provided here. And she's also supporting two projects, uh, the many Linux and, and audit lead uh, wheel, the Many Linux project uh, is actually uh, the group of uh, the most uh, popular Linux distribution in Docker uh, that are uh, building uh, wheels for, for this certain distribution. And Audit Wheel is a command line tool that is used for uh, checking whether this um, wheel is, uh, is proper for certain distribution and nothing is missing. So if you want to know more, just uh, uh, click on the links. And this is uh, at the end of the, uh, the first section. Uh, we will move to the virtual ends. Uh, oh, okay. One, one more thing, uh, just to uh, show how it, uh, how the package is built uh, in the uh, most deep uh, layer, we have the standalone module, which are uh, Python file. If we uh, have more Python files, we can we can uh, have a source code. Uh, and about that, if we compile that, uh, we have the wheel for certain platform. So this is the summary of the packages. And then we can switch to the virtual ends and next uh, story. Uh, during my journey of the uh, development of the uh, Python code on the studies, I have many projects and I installed Ubuntu on my uh, laptop and I started uh, developing many projects at once. I started installing uh, many libraries Mm, to the my global system Python. And I noticed that uh, uh, suddenly I noticed that uh, such picture like here, 
And uh, the problem is that uh, when I was developing and installing many packages, I uh, reinstalled one very important dependency uh, that was uh, used for a graphical engine of Ubuntu and I had to reinstall everything uh, from the scratch. Uh, but uh, it was very quick lesson uh, for me how why we should use virtual and env. Uh, so the what is exactly the virtual env? It is isolated directory where we have all uh, where we have all necessary uh, libraries and Python, uh, which is completely isolated from the global system, uh, which is good. <laughs> uh, and we have few uh, tools to do that. Uh, one is the built-in tool virtual env, uh, which has uh, which is refactored now. Uh, there is a great talk we have today, we had it today by Bernard Gabor writing the virtual env. Uh, I, I fully recommend to uh, see this talk. <coughs> and uh, uh, together with uh, virtual env, uh, there is a useful thing to use uh, the virtual env wrapper. Uh, which provides useful commands for creating uh, virtual env, uh, deleting, deleting it, switching between them, uh, and it's uh, it, it's it is easier to develop the uh, the Python code with with that. Uh, how the virtual ends actually working? They are putting the uh, path of the certain uh, of the certain uh, and virtual env in the directory in the to the path uh, before the global system and um, every uh, every time we were, we are typing the Python it's first looking in the virtual env not in the global system uh, from today's uh, presentation uh, I've heard there will be possibility to create a virtual envs for different uh, Python versions, which is uh, very uh, good, but they are must be installed uh, on the mm, on the system. They they are mu must be present for virtual env. Uh, so uh, in Python world, we have many implementations of the uh, of the Python. We have the main Python uh, in C Python. Uh, which is uh, uh, written in C. We have a PyPy, which is written uh, in Python. <laughs> we have a JSON, which is written in Java. Uh, we have an Ion Python, which is uh, which backend is written in C Sharp. We have a Micro Python, which is uh, used for certain uh, uh, embedded systems, and we have the Stackless. Uh, Python, uh, which is not containing the stack. Uh, and if we, for example, want to develop our library uh, and test it against many versions and many, let's say, distributions of certain Python, uh, we have to uh, have this, uh, this certain Pythons installed on our system. And there is uh, a tool uh, that is uh, doing this, uh, which is called PyEnv. Uh, there is um, possibility for installing many versions of uh, Python, many implementations of Python. Uh, it is offering uh, switching between them. Uh, there is an automation uh, of uh, switching be between certain uh, virtual and ENVs. It is creating the virtual NMs. And here I prepared very useful uh, command that can be used with uh, PyEnv. Uh, but before that, I just uh, want to uh, tell you that uh, the installation of PyEnv is very simple. Uh, if we want, if we want to 
uh, install it, it just can be done by uh, the script provided on uh, GitHub, uh, which is called PyF installer. If you don't trust this, uh, this script, you can use the, um, you can do the uh, command one by one uh, in, this, in this script. And <clears throat> very important thing, uh, you have to install dependencies uh, that are required for compiling the Python versions. And there is uh, mm, all dependencies accordingly to, uh, to the distributions, which can be found here in the frequently asked questions. And be aware of that. If you want to, for example, use the JTON, you have to have the Java on your machine. If you want to use C Sharp, you, uh, if uh, I on Python, you have to have the C Sharp on your machine. Uh, and after that, if you prepare everything, uh, you can just list all available. Uh, every, uh, uh, the PyEnv is installing an, uh, in your home folder. And all versions are isolated from the global Python system and are just uh, put it on the home folder. And if you want to uh, list all available uh, Python versions, you have to use the, this command. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a need for checkouting the the GitHub uh, repo locally, uh, just to update the newest version that uh, appeared uh, in community. <clears throat> uh, to install certain version, we are using uh, such command. We can uninstall certain version and the same command is used for uh, uninstalling environment. Uh, to list all available uh, Python versions, uh, we can use uh, this command. And very important thing is that uh, if we want to know where exactly our virtual env is stored, uh, we have to use the pyenv which uh, Python command, uh, because the normal command which Python we will uh, will show the the shim directory, uh, which is an engine used by the the pyenv, and uh, uh, the real path will be shown uh, by this. Uh, by this command. Also, we can activate or deactivate the environment uh, by hand. And uh, there is a possibility to set some uh, namespaces in our terminal of uh, availability of the certain version of the Python. Uh, the, hierar the hierarchy of the uh, of this command, it's like this. If we want to just test some Python version, we can use the command pyon, pyon shelf and this certain command. Uh, we can uh, attach certain version or environment to the directory. And when we switch inside to this directory, we will have our environment. And uh, we can set up the pyon global, which will be covering the system Python which is very good. And uh, it will be shown uh, the last in this hierarchy. Mm, I will show it in a uh, quick demonstration. Uh, so here, uh, this is my Pyan ver all versions. Uh, I have installed micro Python. I have Minicon the three. Uh, there is also uh, 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 Anaconda uh, for that. This is all versions that are available by PyEnv. We have the version of uh, Anaconda and IonPython, JTON, MicroPython, Miniconda, PyPy, and so on, so on. Uh, here, uh, Currently, I have uh, my global system is 382, which is covering my uh, system Python. Uh, and for example, when I change my directory to the uh, pipx uh, directory, uh, automatically there is activation of my virtual env. 
Uh, if I, for example, want to test the MicroPython, I'm using the shell command, which will be covering uh, the, uh, the environment from, uh, from the directory and, from, and my global Python. And if I just stop testing, I can unset it and I will be back for my global Python. Uh, so this is very convenient during development. I very recommend to use that. Uh, and actually that was the last uh, slide of the second part of uh, PyEnv. Uh, then we are now we are now switching for package manager, which is a big topic and big confusion in Python community uh, because there is a lot of choices that we can make during uh, before we start our project. And here, I start with my uh, uh, short story about uh, dependency hell. Uh, in one of my project, I have. Um, I have many libraries. Uh, each of these libraries have many dependencies. And most of these libraries was using the same uh, dependencies, but uh, in different version. Uh, our project, in our project, we are using the pip uh, package manager and we were using the requirements txt file uh, for uh, reproducibility of the uh, of the environment, and uh, after a few execution, we noticed that uh, sometimes our um, application is not working because of the wrong uh, dependency version, and we were just wonder wondering why it's happening, and we noticed that in some cases uh, uh, the the, or, the order in requirements txt uh, was changing our dependency because the first library, for example, will, for example, was using the Python, uh, the library version uh, 1.00, and the second one was using 1.03, and what was happening? The pip was not; it's not resolving this dependency. Uh, uh, versions. Uh, it's just installing the first version. In, this, in the second line, it's uninstalling this uh, first version and it's installing again uh, the, the second version. So we just wanted uh, to know how we can just manage that. And we switched uh, for different uh, package manager and I will uh, show you uh, plenty of them. Uh, but uh, before that, the short story, uh, what was first? Uh, in the beginning of Python, we have easy install, uh, which was using X for installing. Uh, it was provided in, with setup tools in 2004. Uh, it was using installing uh, packages and its dependencies. Uh, and it uh, there there was no pep for uh, for the easy install. So with the standardization, the pip uh, came across, and we find that uh, and the pip uh, was released in two thousand eight. Uh, it's using wheels or source code, and introduced the requirements txt uh, for freezing the, our, for freezing our environment and knowing what we have exactly installed in our uh, virtual environments. Uh, the good news is that uh, from uh, certain versions of uh, PIP, the latest versions of PIP, um, there is a possibility of checking the hashes of the versions of Python, so we have more security. Uh, but it has to be explicitly uh, used. Uh, but as I mentioned, PIP is not resolving uh, dependencies. So uh, 
uh, where, here is a, a package, uh, here is a table that is comparing easy install together with the pip. The main difference is, is that easy install is using X. Uh, there was possibility to install the many versions of certain library. Uh, there is no pep for easy install. And for pip, there, of course, there is a, a, a pep for 3.8. Uh, it is using wheels, uh, and uh, this is the main, actually the main uh, um, difference between them. So we have, but as I mentioned, there is a, still a problem with um, difference uh, with the resulting of dependencies. So. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, I'm just moving forward. Is that happening? Okay. So before I move to this tool, uh, uh, to these tools, uh, I will tell short introduction to setup by script, uh, which is used for uh, our packages and libraries that we want to install in our environment. Uh, we are feeling uh, we. Mm, are filling necessary information informations and the setup by script is providing the possibility of building the packages uh, distributing them to the PyPy and installing in our uh, virtual ends uh, this is uh, the example uh, uh, piece of code of setup by where we have the version description authors uh, packages uh, we can define additional uh, non-Python uh, packages like uh, SVG uh, files or uh, other uh, data. Uh, I don't want to focus on the setup pie in this uh, presentation. Uh, it is, I just wanted to mention it because it's uh, used in the next tool that I will be uh, talking. Uh, so the pip tools, it's, um, it's a package manager that uh, is using two commands, uh, pip compile and pip sync. And it is resolving uh, dependencies uh, in certain way. It is using the setup I and requirements in file uh, for uh, knowing uh, for resolving all dependencies. And after that, after compiling, we are uh, uh, we have we are getting the requirements txt where we have all resolved environments uh, all uh, resolved dependencies and we can reproduce our environment uh, the second command pip sync is checking whether uh, all necessary versions of libraries are installed in our environment and it's just showing if there is some inconsistency uh, so uh, here we are requiring three files for uh, resolving dependencies. So if we would like, for example, to create it for um, dev, te uh, test, UAT, and prot environments, we have to reproduce uh, requirements in and requirements txt, which is not so convenient. Uh, and then we have a different tool that is uh, pipenv. Uh, it is. Uh, it can manage manage the uh, virtual environments. Uh, if we, for example, is installing something and we have not activated the virtual env, it is automatically in, uh, activating the random virtual env with the random name and installing uh, it there. Uh, but it's. But when it's uh, something uh, when the virtual env is activated, it is installing in the current virtual env. Um, and it is using uh, the pip file and the pip file log files. Uh, and pip file uh, contains two sections. In the first, sec uh, in the first section, there are uh, uh, development, uh, local development packages that are used for uh, creating the project and 
the production develop uh, the production libraries and each time we are providing something it is resolving automatically uh, all necessary depend uh, dependencies and it's telling whether uh, there are conflicts that cannot be resolved for example one library is uh, uh, is requiring the version 2.3 and uh, the second ver the the second library one dependency that um, will we requ requ require version uh, below two. So this is very useful tool uh, for pointing out such uh, situations. And of of course, when we have the stable and uh, environment, we just locking the environment, uh, which then the pip file lock is used. Uh, just simply for um, installing on our CI CDs, uh, on Docker images, and so on, so on. Uh, also, Pipeth is using uh, is using is using uh, our uh, hashes, so we have the security, and there is an alternative for Pipeth for pipenv, which is also which is also great, which is poetry. We use uh, we use it for uh, actually the poetry has the same features as uh, pipenv, uh, but it's faster. I will show that uh, it's faster in, in resolving dependencies. Uh, uh, the main, th uh, so it is managing the different environments. It's also installing packages. It's resolving dependencies, uh, but there is also the convenient way of cr uh, creating packages and publishing into the PyPy. So it is more useful for uh, uh, libraries. And uh, I will say a few words about uh, uh, package manager that is not used, that is not uh, pure Python, which is Anaconda, uh, which is uh, the Python libraries plus some other data scientist li uh, libraries. The mini Conda is the smaller version of Anaconda, and the Conda is the package manager. Uh, the main problem with uh, Anaconda is that it's, use, it's not supporting PyPy, it's supporting uh, only uh, their their channels, uh, they have different um, standards for their packages, so there is no compatibility between PyPy and uh, channels, uh, Conda channels, and of course, um, Conda packages are not working with uh, Python virtual elements, so be aware be aware of that. Uh, if it is mainly used for machine learning. Uh, projects and we have the possibility to use Conda itself or Conda with uh, other package manager. Uh, if we use Conda uh, alone, we have to know that channels, we have to choose good channel because um, uh, very often libraries are uh, out of dated. Uh, they are maintained by different people. Uh, and Mo most safe is to use Conda with other package manager, uh, Conda for some non-Python packages and Python package, package manager for, for getting the latest libraries from Python. Uh, and, uh, and this is mainly useful for machine learning. Uh, also recently, uh, also, uh, recently, uh, there there was uh, a release of a PDM uh, package manager, uh, which is implementing um, PEP 582. Uh, the PEP 582 is uh, talking about storing is uh, is storing the uh, is storing the. Uh, libraries inside the project. There is no need for the virtual ends. Everything is uh, with the project directory. And also it's implementing PEP 517, uh, uh, which is installing libraries from the uh, directory. Uh, so this is, uh, this is a great feature. 
uh, but it's on early stages. And uh, finally, uh, we can use sometimes the pipx, uh, which uh, actually is not resolving the dependencies. It is installing uh, one package per environment. And if you want to install uh, a second package, it is installing in a different in virtual env. And also there is a possibility to install uh, two packages in the same environment, but it will finish uh, with uh, not resolving the dependency. Uh, so it is resolving dependency because it's installing on one package. So here, uh, I've just gathered uh, all, all information that I have already said. You can check it. It is separated in three uh, tables and annotations to these tables. Uh, I will skip that. Uh, this is just the reference. Uh, and finally, I've made some benchmark. And uh, surprisingly, poetry is the fastest uh, from, uh, from chosen package manager. Uh, by me, and uh, I'm, I'm very often using it because of that. Uh, and finally, I will tell a uh, few words about my setup. Uh, I'm mainly uh, installing uh, pip locally on my home folder. It's not if I something install uh, from my user, it's installing locally uh, on my Linux system. Uh, then I'm installing uh, pip and poetry and other tools that I'm requiring for most of the projects that are common from for projects. And then uh, I'm installing pyenv for managing many Python versions and virtual env. Uh, and then I start I start project by creating virtual env and developing. Uh, so here are all resources that I used for presentation. Uh, feel free to uh, to see everything, uh, what I used for this presentation. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Feel free to ask me questions. Thank you, Michal. I see pe people loved your talk. So yeah, <laughs> see those claps. Um, so, okay, so we got two minutes. I, I, I think I can only go through one or two questions. So Matthew is asking, um, how did Wheels help you solve your problem with Terraform and AWS? Uh, actually, uh, we just had to create a Docker, <laughs> a Docker image that was common for every developer, and we solved that. And then we created uh, AWS, uh, AWS layers where we have all libraries. Right, right, OK. Uh, Oliver is asking, how is PyEnv in comparison to virtual env? Any preference and why? I uh, I love to use PyEnv because I can easily switch between versions. I currently working in a project where I have five repositories and five different uh, Python versions. I don't have to install it in different. I don't have to in, it, it, it install globally, and I just can switch it. <laughs> Easily. Okay. Um, what's the best way to maintain package versions between requirements.txt, pip file, and setup.py? Uh, could you repeat? So, what's the, the best way to maintain package versions between requirements, pip file, and setup.py? Uh, I think uh, I common, I'm commonly using the pip file log or poetry log, mm -hmm. uh, because it's resolving my dependencies. Uh, pip tools is uh, okay, but it's uh, but it's too big to have many requirements for many uh, environments, I think. I don't know whether I, uh, I answered your question, but we can talk, <laughs> <laughs> we can talk uh, yeah. after on the next. Cool, so we, we reached the end of the time. There's there's still three questions here. Um, I will urge people to have questions to go to the talk on Discord, uh, the channel of this talk. Uh, thanks for coming and thanks, Mihai, for the, the, the talk. We're going for a short break.